where it belongs and where it used to be. Now, after after a year in the classroom, uh, I became really quite convinced that local control is a key part of the solution to our problems. And so after leaving the, the classroom, I then went off to help pioneer and build the California Charter School Movement. Now, I'm the founder of the California Charter Schools Association. I helped start a bunch of charter schools, Oakland, East Palo Alto, elsewhere. I don't know if you're following charter schools much, but I've got to tell you, it's one of the most important education reform activities going on in California right now. See, charter schools are public schools, but they're granted waivers from the education code. It's the ultimate example in local control. Now, when I got involved with charter schools 10 years ago, there was just a handful of them. Now there's 805. 5% 5 of all California public school kids now go to charter schools. Now, I want to give all public schools the same type of freedom and flexibility that charter schools have. That would be a huge, major step in the right direction. Now, my experience in the classroom not only helped me understand how hard it is to be a teacher and how we need to create a teaching professional and how we need to empower teachers, but it also helped prepare me for my current job. Now, my current job as insurance commissioner, now, I, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking just like my 12 to 9, well, now she's, now she's 18, my 18-year-old daughter. You probably think I have the most boring job in the state of California insurance commissioner. Well, it turns out it's a great job. There's, there's only eight positions elected statewide. Now I'm one of them. I have this huge, massive department of insurance. We oversee everything, insurance, practically, in the state of California. That's a big number, about $160 billion industry about 10% of the entire economy. I'll tell you why I love my job. When I make a decision, it impacts everybody, every business, every consumer, every family. When I got there three years ago, I have to confess, a culture shock for me, uh, over a thousand employees, uh, all of them belong to public employee unions, so there's collective bargaining agreements there. Six different unions represent my employees. In addition to being a part of a public employee union, each, each person at the Department of Insurance also has lifetime civil service protection in addition to their collective bargaining agreements. So it's not like running a company in Silicon Valley, that's for sure. But I have wonderful people at the Department of Insurance, dedicated public service folks, so it's a fantastic team. So together what we did was when I got there three years ago, I went to meet them all, first of all, a thousand of them, more than a thousand, across 16 different offices. It took me a few months. And together my team and I, we built a strategic plan for the Department of Insurance. Now, I know a lot of you are run companies or are in uh, public service organizations or nonprofits. A strategic plan is an important document for any organization. It focuses any organization on just those strategic key issues, activities that really make a difference. Now, we went through every program, every dollar, every person. And lo and behold, I asked lots of questions. Now, why are we doing this program here? And all too often, the answer was, well, of course, we've been doing it this way for 50 years. Why are you ask? Well, does it help anybody? Well, not that we can tell. Well, then stop it. We got rid of dozens of programs. Other programs we ramped up. For example, I have 200 police officers that work for me at the Department of Insurance. Now, going after insurance fraud, now that I made a high priority because insurance fraud in the middle of this recession drives up insurance rates at the worst time. Now, here's the results of this whole thing. Now, the Department of Insurance has been around for 130 years. The last time the Department of Insurance did a strategic plan and a top-down review was, well, never. Uh, and so uh, the results have been pretty dramatic. Uh, in insurance fraud. We've arrested over 2,000 people in insurance fraud in the last two years alone. That's more people to be arrested for insurance fraud than in any other two-year period ever in the history of the state. My operating budget has, has shrunk now because of this modernization and overhaul by 15%. So I've been able to cut my operating expenses permanently. I now have this big budget surplus of the Department of Insurance. I've taken this surplus and passed it back into the marketplace with two tax cuts on insurance agents and brokers and insurance companies that fund my department. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, I think you're looking at the only person in Sacramento history that's ever downsized anything. And here's what I want to do. As governor, I want to do the same thing I did to the Department of Insurance to every single one of the 400 different state agencies and state departments. I can assure you all, none of them have been overhauled or modernized. Billions of dollars are being wasted. Can't afford that anymore. It's urgent that we modernize. I mean, urgent. Do we count on state government to, to uh, do certain things for us very efficiently and effectively? It's just not happening. And you know that 
all around us, the state's crumbling here. You know, in, in 1999, California was the sixth largest economy in the world. By 2003, we had fallen to seventh. Last year, eighth in decline. This state, our beautiful state that we all love so much, we are shrinking in terms of market share in the global economy at a rapid clip. No wonder our unemployment rate is 12.4%. That's the official unemployment rate. If you add in all the people who are underemployed, meaning they have part-time jobs, maybe full-time jobs, and then you add in all the people who have just given up looking for employment completely, well, that number is much higher, 20%. There's 4 million people in California that are underemployed or unemployed. unemployed. Now that's misery level, uh, that's depression level misery going on in California right now. Now where are all the jobs gone? Well, let's take one of our not so friendly neighboring states of Nevada. Now Nevada appointed a SWAT team. That SWAT team reports directly to the governor. And the SWAT team has one mission, recruit people like you all to move from California to Nevada. And they take out these full-page ads in California business publications, maybe you've seen them, and other newspapers, the Tribune maybe. And these, these ads have a simple message, and it says, if you do business in California, you're nuts. Come to Nevada where there's no corporate income tax, zero. Where there's no personal income tax, zero. Where the workers' compensation insurance rates are 30% less than here in California because of fewer mandates, and the electricity stays on. And lo and behold, people leave. Now, the U.S. Census Bureau, they're the scorekeepers here. They count the people as they leave. Now, this is pretty stunning, I think. 3,000. 3,000 people a week pick up and leave the state of California each and every week now. Now, our population continues to grow. Even though we've lost a million people in the last five years, the state of California's population continues to grow because of illegal immigration and birth rates. So, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, this is the worst of all worlds. The perfect storm. We have consumers of government services coming in, and we have taxpayers leaving. Now, no wonder we can't balance the budget. Now, I'm running for governor to change things. Now, I think California's headed in completely the wrong direction, and we need a completely different direction in order to get California back on track. Now, as people evaluate candidates, as you look at candidates, some candidates are proposing more incremental changes or, or changes around the edges. Then if you're looking for that, then you're probably not going to be looking to me. I'm proposing game-changer approaches, sweeping bold reforms, because that's what's going to take in order to get California competitive again in this 21st century global economy. Three key parts to my, my, my reform agenda, and then I'd be happy to get into questions on any subject. But number one, the first thing we need to do is to cut taxes across the board. Now, I'm proposing a 10% cut in sales taxes, 10% cut in corporate taxes, 10% cut in personal income taxes, every bracket, and a 50% cut in capital gains taxes. Yeah. Taxpayers go wild, but I appreciate that. Now, you know, some people have asked me, lots of people have asked me, how on earth can we afford tax cuts? We can't balance the budget as it is, how do we fund this? Well, the answer is, how can we afford not to? I mean, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the highest sales taxes, vehicle license fees, gas taxes in the country. One reason why so many taxpayers are leaving is because of the high tax structure. Now, we've studied this in other states. You watch what's going to happen. You lower tax rates, jobs will come back. So the tax rates are lower, but the tax base is bigger. And we actually have more tax revenues, not less, after the tax cut. Now, this wouldn't be the way it is if our taxes were at the national average or lower than that. And then you cut taxes, and you might not get that same effect. But when your taxes are already one of the highest in the country, driving businesses and jobs out of here, then you reduce taxes, then you get the positive impact immediately. And it's key. Centerpiece of my campaign. We'll never balance the budget without bringing more jobs back to the state of California. The second part of my reform agenda is to cut spending by 10% to balance the budget once and for all. Now, I'm not proposing across the board cuts. That's a mistake. I'm proposing uh, to do to the state of California what I did at the Department of Insurance. There's a fundamental difference in doing a top-down review and overhauling, keeping certain programs, eliminating others completely, modernizing others. That's what I'm proposing to do with the state of California. I've gone through every page of the 1,200-page budget. And my, 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 my plan's all on my website, steveporcher.com, if you want to see the details. Because everyone needs to know exactly what I plan to do in advance of the election. 
But we've gone through the budget and we've identified.